Hello again. Ultra distance cycling events are a bit tricky in terms of getting faster because it's not necessarily just, well, well FTP is the only metric that everybody uses, but it's how close to your FTP you can ride for the given amount of time and how much time you have to spend off the bike, you know, recovering, you know, how long are your brakes. But even then, does getting more powerful make much difference? I've done a few rough and ready calculations using this tool called Best Bike Split. And at first sight, it doesn't seem very significant, the amount of time you can save by actually riding at a higher power. But uh, when you think about it, it probably, it probably does make a difference. You'll have to adjust this to your powers and, and your riding speeds and things like that. But for the 100 kilometer hilly loop that I do, I have a normalized power of about 150 watts, and that then takes me six and a half hours to do the 100 kilometers. If I do, say I get 10 watts, if I go 10 watts faster, or you get 10 watts more, normalized power. I save about 20 minutes, which might not seem very much, but it does mean you can stop for a coffee, which, which can be quite useful. And it can be quite a good break, particularly if you're getting tired of the hills. And actually stopping for 20 minutes might mean you can go faster and produce more power for the rest of the route. So overall, you, you might end up getting, you know, 12 watts or 14 watts, 15 watts or whatever. And uh, as a consequence, this sort of giving yourself a little bit of space might lead to uh, reasonably big improvements over time. I've done the same with a 200 kilometer Audax loop, which has got about 1600 meters of climbing, so a lot less climbing per kilometer. And surprisingly, 10 watts improvement in power gives you 20 minutes improvement in time. So not as much. So it seems like this improvement based on power is weighted towards the hillier courses. Probably makes a bit of sense because you're going slower and, um, and speed, you know, wind resistance is exponentially related to speed. So if you go slower, you get more faster by getting a little bit more power. And of course you can extrapolate this to longer events like a 600 kilometer Audax type ride with similar sorts of climbing you would expect to gain an hour. Well, an hour is fairly significant. It doesn't seem very much in an event that's got a 40 hour limit, but if you're right on the limit and struggling to make the cutoff, an hour, it means you can have an hour extra sleep or an hour's extra rest, and that, that's quite a lot. That can make quite a big difference to your enjoyment of the event or your ability to complete the event. And for something more adventurous, I had a look at the Raid Pyrenees. And based on a normalised power of about 100 watts, then you've got about a 46, 47 hour ride time predicted by Best Bike Split. I mean, Best Bike Split's not that great at predicting for long events, and bearing in mind this doesn't account for rest and sleep and all those other factors. But it gives us a guide, and as a relative measure, it's probably quite effective. If you could improve your average power or your normalised power by 10 watts, so 110 watts, then you would save three hours on that ride. But three hours, if you're sleep deprived, is quite a significant amount of sleep. You could stop for a meal now and again, or, or things like that. So actually, it might not seem very much, but it is actually significant. And to get faster, you can either extend the amount of time you can ride at a certain power, a certain speed, and that'll mean you'll end up faster over the longer event. You can improve your maximum speed, or sort of your FTP we could use as an analog for your best speed, and that means that in theory your zone two and everything like that goes up. So you, if you're riding at 65% of your FTP, 65% of your FTP goes, you know, goes up. So if you, if you want to ride 10 watts faster, you improve your FTP by 15 watts that might work for you. In theory, I don't see why it wouldn't work. And then the other approach is to just try and ride for longer at a given average power, a given normalised power. Well, that's a lot more intangible, and there are a lot more variables that influence how fast you can ride or what power you can average for a given duration when the durations get up to you know, 10 hours or multiple days or something like that. It depends on how hydrated you are, how well you look after yourself, how uncomfortable you are, how much you eat, when you eat, what you eat, and all these other factors. How much you sleep, you know, how tired you are, have you, you know, how stressed you are, you're really stressed going into it. So improving the percentage of your FTP that you can ride at, whether that can move that from 60% up to 70%, is a bit more intangible and a lot more factors going on. A lot of people come to me to work on their average speed so that they can improve their enjoyment, enjoy it more, they can stop a bit more, and as a consequence they enjoy the events more, uh, they finish in much better condition, and, uh, and they can enjoy the cycling a lot more. If you want some help to get fitter and faster, then you could join our EBR club, a group plan, or you could work with us one-to-one, -one, either myself or, or Claire, 
I've still got a few spaces available for clients, although we're getting quite busy at the moment. So, um, so get in early if you, if you want to work with us. And another thing that's important is that the use it or lose it principle, really. So particularly regarding your FTP or your, your higher end powers, if you don't train your high end powers, you lose them, they'll come down. It might not really impact your speed over long distance events, but it, it might do, particularly if it's hilly and you've got to go much closer to your threshold, you've got to work harder on the climbs and then recover. So it, it's worth maintaining these some interval sessions to just maintain that level of fitness and maintain that average higher intensity powers. So what we're saying is there are some gains to be made. You can get faster, you can improve your average speed. It takes time, but it is reasonable to improve your FTP by 5% or more in a year, even if you've fairly well trained and if you've not been doing harder training sessions interval training sessions sort of sweet spot and threshold type sessions then you might get much bigger gains on your FTP and that might improve your ability to ride up hills faster and also have a knock on to the pace that you can sustain over longer endurance events. In fact working with somebody for Paris Press Paris last time he made some big improvements in his FTP and that improved his average speed a lot. He'd done a super randomer series the year before, but he'd, he'd had to sort of pretty much ride without any brakes. Whereas in the first 400 kilometres of uh, Paris Press Paris, he was way ahead of schedule. So it's worth doing some work on your FTP and see whether you can improve it in a short period of time. Say, give yourself six weeks or a couple of months. And if you make some gains, then keep doing it because it seems that you might, that might be an area that you've got a weakness and you can work on that. Similarly, Pick a test ride that's a bit longer or a hilly ride or something that's analogous to your goal events and do that and see whether you improve with that over time. Because if your endurance is a bit weak, you might find that you can go a bit faster. What you could do is start faster than you think you can sustain and see whether you sustain it. And if you don't, then keep doing it and then it will just gradually extend. The amount of time you can ride for at a given intensity will improve. And these improvements will compound as you get towards your event and hopefully it'll all work out perfectly. Anyway, I hope this makes sense. Try to improve your FTP, try to improve your endurance, try to work out which one is your weakest point and work on that but maintain the other thing. And also bear in mind that you can waste a lot of time when you stop. So don't neglect that area. Don't neglect the logistics of all these things because like aerodynamics, how much you, keep you weigh, how much your kit weighs, rolling resistance, you know, what tyres you're using. They're all important factors. You don't have to get any fitter to benefit from these gains. Anyway, hope this helps. Uh, let me know. And if you want any help, get in touch because I'd love to work with you. See you in the next one. Bye.